TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant warns UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres amid rising prospects of conflict between Israel and Lebanon. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia hosts 128 Israelis after their commercial aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing in the city of Jeddah. China acknowledges that Beijing and Riyadh conduct mutually beneficial cooperation in various fields, including in civil nuclear energy. Two large-scale operations alongside separate counter-terror activities were launched in the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley overnight, when IDF, ISA and Border Police Special Operations Forces operated in dozens of locations, during the course of which a total of 24 suspected terror operatives were successfully apprehended. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the operational activities sparked separate riots, as well as reported exchanges of fire between Palestinian militants and Israeli forces. Nevertheless, thankfully, no injuries were reported among the Israeli troops. Meanwhile, amid heightened tensions between Israel and the Islamist Hamas organization, following Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's threat in which he emphasized that anyone directing acts of terror against Israelis would become legitimate targets, Leader of the Lebanese-Iranian proxy Hezbollah, namely Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah, declared, quote, For any Israeli assassination against a Lebanese, Palestinian, Iranian person or anyone else that is carried out on Lebanese territory, there will be a severe reaction, pledging that Hezbollah will not be silent about any such attack. In a televised address to his followers from an undisclosed bunker, in which he spent decades for fear of Israeli retribution, the Hezbollah Secretary General asserted, quote, We will not allow a return to assassinations in Lebanon, and we will not accept changes to the rules of the conflict. Israel must understand this. It is important to highlight that the threat leveled by Nasrallah is made at a time of heightened tensions along Israel's border with Lebanon, where there is growing friction between the IDF and Hezbollah operatives. Moreover, on August 31st, the Security Council of the United Nations is expected to renew the mandate of its UN interim force in Lebanon, namely UNIFIL. Prior to the vote, consultations with Israel, Lebanon and other involved parties are expected to deliberate the substance of UNIFIL's mandate, with Beirut seeking to weaken the authority granted to it by opting to force the peacekeeping force to coordinate all activities in Lebanon with the Lebanese Armed Forces, a demand which Jerusalem vehemently opposes since the Lebanese Armed Forces, or LAF, has been infiltrated by Hezbollah which seeks to ensure its own freedom of operation against the Jewish state. Meanwhile, as part of extensive efforts to block any attempt to weaken UNIFIL's mandate in Lebanon, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held a substantive meeting with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the United Nations in New York overnight, during which he highlighted Israel's resolve to protect itself from Iran's proxy in Lebanon. <laughs> Ambassador Erdogan and I just met the UN Secretary General for a discussion on very central topics related to national security, including the friction on the Lebanon-Israel border and UNIFIL's responsibility under its mandate to ensure that if it is possible to alleviate tensions, it should happen. Secretary Guterres committed to do his utmost to assist on this front. In any event, we will know how to protect ourselves by our own power. Nevertheless, we are not interested in conflict. Israeli Ambassador to the United Nations Gilad Erdan, for his part, highlighted the dangers lurking about if UNIFIL's mandated authority is indeed diminished. Your meeting with the UN Secretary General was very important. 
From here, we continue to another meeting with the U.S. Ambassador in the United Nations. These meetings are very important because in two days' time, the United Nations will vote on renewing the mandate and authority of UNIFIL forces, which in fact are supposed to prevent war between Israel and Lebanon. Your clarification to the Secretary General that if UNIFIL does not receive all of the authorities to control Hezbollah's actions on our northern border, Hezbollah will exact a great disaster upon Lebanon and, as you noted, return it to the Stone Age. In my opinion, it is crucial for this message to be said here, at the United Nations, by the Defense Minister of the State of Israel, and I hope that the results will be seen here, in the next couple of days, at the Security Council meeting. Separately at the United Nations headquarters, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres's spokesman was asked to comment on yesterday's bombardment of Syria's Aleppo International Airport, which Damascus attributed to the Israeli Air Force. Uh, it did lead to the airport closure and the cancellation of at least uh, one flight uh, from the UN's humanitarian air service, and uh, Aleppo is a, critical, uh, is a critical hub for that. Uh, we're very concerned about these uh, reported airstrikes. Uh, the Secretary General strongly condemns all violence in Syria, urges the parties to respect their obligations under international law. I think it bears reminding that civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected under international humanitarian law, and he urges all parties to exercise maximum restraint to prevent further regional escalation. Dujeric was also asked about the latest ordeal between Israel and Libya in reference to a closed doors meeting that was held between Israeli Foreign Minister Eli Cohen and his Libyan counterpart Najla Mangush in Rome. While stopping short from addressing the groundbreaking bilateral meeting, Jarek focused on the need to protect the Libyan top diplomat, who was fired from her post and fled to Istanbul, Turkey, after cumulative threats were made against her life. We have no particular comment on whatever bilateral contacts may have had. I think we are concerned about the, the, the safety of the foreign minister. There are reports that she's been threatened uh, and that she had to flee uh, the country. It is imperative. Uh, her safety is, is paramount and imperative. It is important to know that the regrettable turn of events vis-a-vis -vis Libya has caused separate agencies in Israel to voice criticism of Foreign Minister Eli Cohen's global activities. Among others, Mossad officials warned that the behavior of Jerusalem's top diplomat caused enormous damage to relations that have been cultivated between Israel and Libya. The Mossad, whose Tevel division is responsible for the Libya file, covertly cultivated Jerusalem's ties with Tripoli over a long period of time with a great deal of sensitivity. Therefore, Mossad officials were seemingly furious about the exposure of ties between the two countries, which they stressed caused damage that will be difficult to repair and could put lives at risk. The officials further explained that the problem isn't a specific relationship of trust that was damaged, but rather a debacle that will radiate outward and impact Israel's ability to cultivate relationships with other countries in the future. Among those countries includes the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with which Israel is indirectly negotiating prospects for normalization as part of a broader U.S.-Saudi agreement. With that being said, a rare glimpse of good neighborly relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia took place last night when a commercial aircraft with 128 Israelis on board was forced to make an emergency landing. Responding immediately to this distress call, Saudi authorities directed the aircraft to land at Jeddah International Airport, where the Israelis were treated with warm hospitality as befits friendly nations. I genuinely appreciate the warm treatment given by Saudi authorities to the Israeli passengers whose plane got into trouble and was forced to make an emergency landing in Jeddah. I'm glad they are all returning home. I deeply appreciate our good neighborly relations. It is important to know that while Israel and Saudi Arabia do not have overt relations, covert relations between the two countries have been manifest for decades with accounts of multiple attempts since as early as the 50s to reach some type of normalization. Nevertheless, the royal court in Riyadh maintains high demands in exchange for peace with Israel, including U.S. security guarantees in the form of a treaty, Israeli concessions to the Palestinians, 
and Jerusalem's removal of objections to the development of a Saudi nuclear program that would be jump-started by the United States. And while Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister Ron Dermer recently revealed that Jerusalem would possibly renege on its objection, pending clear safeguards that would avert a Saudi race to nuclear weapons capabilities, Jerusalem's sentiments of concession may turn redundant since China is keen on outmaneuvering the United States by offering the Arabian Kingdom a nuclear program absent any substantive strings. China and Saudi Arabia have a comprehensive strategic partnership. The two sides have carried out mutually beneficial and friendly cooperation in various fields, which has brought tangible benefits to the people of the two countries. China will continue to conduct mutually beneficial cooperation with Saudi Arabia in various fields, including civil nuclear energy, while strictly abiding by international nonproliferation obligations. The comment by the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman was made following a report of a bid by state-owned China National Nuclear Corp to build a nuclear plant in Saudi Arabia's eastern province. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to point out that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you are blessed by our productions and would like to help support keeping TV7 Israel on air, please consider making a financial donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.